Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, the Parliamentary Labour Party has, as expected, voted to request the NEC bring forward a rule change at conference to reinstate elections to the Shadow Cabinet, a move interpreted by Jeremy Corbyn's supporters as designed to rein him in should he win the leadership election. He's countered by suggesting that party members or party conference should elect some members of the Shadow Cabinet team. Well, in a moment, I'll be speaking to the man who is at the centre of the battle for the survival of the Labour Party in the 80s and has the scars to prove it. But first, our political editor, Nick Watt, observed a musical day for the two Labour tribes. Labour may be in the throes of a battle for its soul, but when it comes to music, the party's leading figures appear to be united in their taste for retro chic. Today, Jeremy Corbyn was endorsed by an iconic band, which was the scourge of Thatcherites. Your band, formed in the late 1970s, <clears throat> during a time of increasing youth unemployment, then went on to become this iconic name, UB40. But critics couldn't resist saying that winning the endorsement of a bunch of ageing rockers may show how Jeremy Corbyn's worldview hasn't changed in three decades, a view vehemently rejected by UB40. Really, in the end, what we proved is that we were absolutely right to be complaining about what they were doing during the Thatcher period because they were deregulating the banks, they were selling off houses, and that, you know, and those are the problems that we're dealing with now. You know, we were right what we said then, and we're right now. You know, it's obvious. And the band members are unamused by any suggestion that a split among the original members of UB40 could provide something of an awkward metaphor for the future of Labour under a renewed Corbyn leadership. <laughs> oh, that's what sad. a great question. <laughs> oh, nice one. I don't think I don't think one has anything to do with the other, do you? You know, uh, it wasn't really a split so much as our lead singer left eight years ago. We're still UB40. Yeah. The party could live on with different people yeah, at the, exactly, at the, yes. at the front. There's what a novel thought. idea. What a There's a novel idea. Yes. At the event, we had a rare sighting. A politician with a genuine interest in the arts, who loves music when it has a political theme and when it moves him. We associate music with times in your life. I got to love um, Caribbean music in the 1960s when I lived in and worked in Jamaica for two years and that taught me a whole thing then about original reggae bands and so yes one is attracted to the music of um, some people who've done sort of great political things like Joan Baez and the, the singing she's done and that incredible voice she's got enough to ask you is but Corbyn's interest in music does have its limits. Are you secretly jealous of Ed Balls and would you really like to be in that bow tie on Strictly Come Dancing? Within the confines, seclusion and privacy of this room, can I let you, and perhaps you'll tell the others, I have absolutely no desire whatsoever <laughs> to go on Strictly Come Dancing. I wish Ed Balls well. Our Strictly star is out in London tonight celebrating the publication of his memoirs in the presence of his new dance partner and some once mighty figures in the Labour Party. They may cut a smaller figure these days, but one of their number, who's a retired musician to boot, couldn't help embarking on something of a battle of the bands. I don't think there's a particular advantage in linking yourself to a particular musical form let alone one that is about from 30 or 40 years ago. I mean, I think Jeremy is dating himself a bit if he's looking for UB40. I mean, UB40, uh, red, red wine is all I remember, and red, red wine with perhaps W-H-I-N-E is what many of his critics would say they're hearing from Jeremy. I don't believe you. And in a sign of how bitter this battle has become, Alan Johnson even suggested that Jeremy Corbyn would have been on the wrong side of one of the greatest musical debates of the modern era.
Jeremy and I think a lot of his supporters were the people who wanted Bob Dylan to stay with blowing in the wind and his harmonica that he had around his neck. That was, and you know, they booed and jeered him when he brought out the electric guitar. Uh, I was a Dylan post-electric rather than pre-electric. Actually, our aged politicians know that life has moved on since the 1980s. Rudimental and Rizzle Kicks have endorsed Jeremy Corbyn, perhaps giving him the edge as Labour's tribes court a new generation. Well, with me now is Lord Whitty, Larry Whitty, who was the General Secretary of the Labour Party for nine years during the last Labour Civil War in the 1980s. Good evening to yeah, you. Okay. Um, last time round, when Labour uh, was tearing itself apart, the modernisers won. You were on the right side of the last Civil War. And I wonder what you make of this current war. Well, we've just seen a rather gentle film. I'm afraid the current war is pretty vicious. Uh, and uh, the two sides seem incapable of reaching any compromise. I think this uh, slugging each other off has got to stop. Uh, I think once this contest is over, we need to have a real review of where the Labour Party is going. Uh, and we need to do that very rapidly. But, but Otherwise, we're in very serious difficulty. But who do you hold responsible for the state of the party? Almost everybody. Uh, I think uh, I didn't vote for Jeremy, but I thought Jeremy should have been given more time. I therefore was not in favour of that rather ham-fisted rolling coup that we had in July. Uh, I also uh, feel that uh, some of these problems are fairly long term. We've had two basic tendencies in the last, uh, uh, last few years. Um, the leader's office uh, has gained, the leader and the leader's office have gained an accretion of power that yeah. started and, really and, under Tony Blair yes, and it's continued with but, Ed Miliband. Yes, uh, and that would, just st stopping at a point of talking about Ed Miliband, when Ed Miliband got rid of uh, the uh, elections to the shadow cabinet, you were dead against that and refused to take part, is that correct? Um, that, that wasn't the point on which I refused to take part, but I refused to take part with his approach to affiliation Why and membership. Why did you membership. refuse to take part in I'm interested. Well, because uh, the, the, the proposal that he had on the table of how we treat membership, mm -hmm. affiliation, and ultimately um, who is the electoral college, I didn't agree with, and I still don't agree with it. And there is need that to be what's checks led to what's happened now, I think, think so. I think that, uh, in part, the, the, any country, any party has to have checks and balances. Yep. And there are different centres of power. Any large party is a coalition. We have to recognise that. Unfortunately, we're getting to a situation which is utterly polarised. Yep. And therefore, if we're getting to a position where there are no checks and balances, will one side of the party have to go? Will there have to be a victor which will then inevitably mean there'll be a split? I don't think we get to that point. I, I think there is hope uh, that at the end of this contest, whoever wins, the party will come to its senses. Maybe some of the great movers and shakers in the old days, it used to be the general secretaries of the trade unions who'd mm. intervene. But it may be them again, it may be others. But interesting, who... last time round, I mean, militant was nothing like the proposition that momentum is, and last time round, the trade unions were on the side of getting Militant out. This, side is, this time it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Um, militant were uh, an outside organisation trying to infiltrate the, pump, the, the party. And of course, at the same time, we just had a split to the right with the yep. SDP going. Now, we're, we're not in that extreme position at the moment, but we are in a similar situation in terms of the way people are treating each other. Yes. And I think this has been amplified because of the existence of social media. Uh, and we need to calm down and we need to look at is the social how we media could... issue really can be laid at Jeremy Corbyn's feet. Um, I don't think it can be entirely laid at, uh, at the one side or the other. There are some pretty vicious comments going in both directions. But in general, it has been more associated with, you, with the momentum side said, rather than with said that, individuals within you, momentum. But, but you said that, uh, the Labour Party has to be for the white working class, it has to be for the liberal professionals, it has to be for ethnic minorities. If it's not for that, do you think Jeremy Corbyn can win an election? Do you think Jeremy Corbyn could be Prime Minister? I think Jeremy Corbyn could become a Prime Minister if the party could put it together. However, uh, we are not at present on course for that. And whether Owen or Jeremy wins in a few weeks' time, uh, we've got to get back on course. And my message today is really the people who matter in the party, the members, the MPs, have to put this contest behind them and move forward. Thank you very much, dear Larry Whitty.